We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloop Cats. Sloop Cast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Good I'm just right, Jared, and, 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 and apparently our our uh, live chat is being nuked. Yeah, I was. I saw. I saw the live chat. The live chat get nuked, and it threw me off there for a second. <laughs> but no, doing all right, Jared. How are you doing? Doing all right. Um, I think, Kyle. What if? And I'm, I'm just throwing this out there because I always like to ask you something goofy to start the show. <laughs> That's not at all related to the show or what we advertise it um, right. about. And even though that's exa exact opposite thing you're supposed to do on YouTube, on YouTube, it says, hey, get right to the point. But uh, one of my one to ever follow rules. Um, what if sneezing was considered a moral failure like depression was? Please discuss. What? 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 <laughs> What if sneeze? I don't even know like, where to begin with that. Exactly, it's absurd. That's my All right. point. All right, you know what else was observed? Our defense last year. Hey, I thought you said observed at first, but then I realized you said absurd, and now I'm I'm back on track. And also, that was All a right. good segue. Hey. All right. Uh, yeah. So we're going to talk about the defense today. Talk about defense updates from Ryan Day and others. Captains. Captains were announced yeah. here, Jared. Um, to no surprise with a lot of them here, but Cameron Bob, Tommy Eichenberg, Tyler Friday, Cade Stover, CJ Stroud, and Court Williams. Any of those that uh, stuck out to you as a bit of a surprise as being a named a captain? Um, Tommy Eichenberg. Absolutely not. Cameron Bob, absolutely not. Um, CJ Stroud, absolutely not. Court Williams, absolutely not. Um, there are some omissions right. that I'm surprised by. All right. Um, I would have fully expected to see Hickman on this list. I would have fully expected to see um, Zach Harrison on this list. So that, that surprises yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah, Zach Harrison's definitely a yeah, I think that's probably the biggest biggest name to me. Yeah, Zach Harrison not on that list. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And also, Jared, um did I mention it in the other no, I didn't. Uh <laughs> I wrote it down, but I didn't write the person's name. <laughs> black stripe. We have a black stripe news here. Okay. And that is CJ Hicks. CJ Hicks um, got his black strut removed on Saturday, and he is. Um, he joins two others earlier this. Um, was it earlier in the week? Yeah, I think it was earlier. Well, in the it'll week. been last. It'll be. This doesn't come out till Wednesday, so it'll be last week for everyone else. <laughs> uh, uh, Chip uh, Trainum and Jair Brown also uh, removing their black stripes earlier the week too. So got three, three black stripe removals and CJ Hicks, probably the biggest name of the host three there. Yeah. Uh, but well, Jair Brown, I think is surprising a lot of people with how far along he is already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll get that knocked out of the way there and we'll get into the meat of the episode. And that is, Brand day talking about the defense. Yeah. Um, so one of the concerns coming into the the fall camp was uh, a lack of. And, I, and I'm talking from a quantity standpoint, not a quality standpoint. So just so we're clear about that, uh, a lack of depth at corner. The players they have, they feel great about, um, but they don't have a lot of scholarship players at corner. Um. Ryan Day says Cam Brown is still on a pitch count. Hopefully that's not much longer. Uh, Cam Brown, I think, is a guy who you would expect um, at the very least to be heavily involved in the rotation at the second cornerback spot. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's we, we talked about this last week or two weeks ago. 
about the number of corners that move to safety or to linebacker or where I don't think any of the corners move to linebacker. <laughs> but yeah, uh, depth depth was definitely a concern here for for the corners here. But we again we talked about how many safeties are going to be on the field at once. Yeah, and will will that be because of that? Will that the depth in the corners actually be that big of an issue where you have your two main corners and then you have two others that will that will fill in um, when need be or maybe in a nickel situation. Well, I guess the nickel is really kind yeah, of it's, the just, it's always position, it's always a nickel maybe, situation now. Um, maybe in a dime situation, but I don't really see that too often. But, but yeah, hear, hearing about. uh Cam Brown, uh, hopefully being able to get back in the mix a little bit more is definitely, definitely happy to hear that. For sure. Um, but uh, also along those same lines, and you know, Kyle talked about some of the corners getting moved to safety. I think they're feeling really good about their safety depth right now. So Cam Martinez yes, and yes. Jansen Dunn's, um, Jansen Dunn have both uh, been taking reps at corner. Um, there were two of the guys that were moved from corner to safety. And again, like with the, with the guys feeling really good about their, about their safety depth, but maybe not so much about their corner depth. Martinez and Dunn are now taking reps at both corner and safety. And I think both of the guys, um, Martinez, especially were being looked at in the cover safety position. So it's, it's a pretty, the cover safety is also kind of a nickel corner, right? So it's um, not a huge adjustment, I would assume, from a from a scheme standpoint. So it's uh, it's also giving both of these guys flexibility to get them on the field as much as possible, and it's giving the team a lot of flexibility. It's a real win win if they can if they can handle the additional load of learning that second position. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. One of the things uh, I've heard Knowles talk about is the players essentially learning the entire scheme and not just their role. He says that's a big part of what they do as a defense. So once again, maybe not a huge leap to be practicing both at the cover corner and the and the safety or and the cornerback position. Mm -hmm. Uh, so speaking of speaking of that too, Ryan Day talks about the defensive guys becoming more and more comfortable with the scheme, which that was a big issue, big concern that we had coming into this season. Uh, Nathan Ransom had a very good summer, says a lot about his work and ability to recover that he's already back. They are certainly keeping an eye on that. Uh, he said he's also encouraged by the defensive line. A tenacity and pad level nastiness. That's what we need. Yeah, um, I've heard this report a lot, essentially. Talking, you know, one of the conversations that's been around the program a lot is about toughness. And it sounds like at the very least, the defensive side of the line has taken that to heart. Um, we've heard. We're here. We're hearing raving things at the very least about the defensive line side of mm -hmm. things, because, you know, we're, it's what we're talking about a lot. Right. The defense, the defense, the defense. If, if I, Kyle has said it, I have said it. If Ohio State can have a top. 30 defense, I think they're a national title contender. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's. So the defensive line at the very least is getting huge hype. I mean, the, their sophomore class, which we talked a lot about last year for obvious reasons. And I think we'll keep talking. The sophomore class alone could be the starting defensive line. And that's not to say that they should be, but in a pinch, the sophomore class alone could be your defensive line. Mm -hmm. Mike Hall, Tyleek Williams, JTT and Sawyer. 
I would, if that was a starting defensive line, I'd I'd be kind of okay with that. Yeah. Absolutely. Me too. Me too. And yeah. I'm not saying that those guys should be the starters or they're the best starters currently on the team, but if those were the starters, I'd feel okay about that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. Th- th- those were, those were some of the words that we heard too. Uh, we mentioned in, in um, last week, last week's episode, toughness, discipline, th- and, and uh, skill. Th- those are, the, those are the three things that we heard um, and you're going to continue hearing all throughout camp. So him hearing toughness here regarding the defensive line, no, no surprise here. Uh, let's see. Last year was an interesting season, says Ryan Day, uh, with highs and lows. Steel Chambers doing what he was able to do says a lot about him. He's not afraid to fail. Now he's experienced and can be the best version of himself. His ability to diagnose plays has grown. And we saw that especially towards the especially towards the end of the year and yeah. more so in the in the Rose Bowl too, M- making making big making big plays when he needs to and yeah we we saw how great of a player he can be uh, and yeah exactly like what Ryan Day said has has experience here has another has another off season camp uh, under his belt or will have under his belt and yeah I'm. Really excited to see uh, year two of Steel Chambers. One hundred percent, Kyle. Is am I going? How far? How far on the out on the limb am I going? And you can answer this not at all if you want to answer it not at all. All right. How far far out on the limb am I going by saying Steel Chambers is going to be the best linebacker on the defense this year? I, I, I think that's I think that's reasonable. I, I wouldn't say that's. I don't think that's you on the very edge of the cliff here, but Lim, I, I think say, keep the analogy consistent for God's sakes, Kyle limb. <laughs> We're talking tree limbs, not mountains. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, I, I won't argue. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. I, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, another, another name that a lot of people, uh, like to talk about because it's always all right all right everybody it's it's that time of the year jared it's that time of the year uh fall camp is here and who's which 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 shiny freshman are we going to talk about here and and yeah please go ahead <laughs> uh so ryan Tully, ryan day talks about one of the shiny freshmen here and really should the be shiniest a, should 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 be still a senior in in high school but yeah here he is at ohio state here uh, and that's Sony Styles. Uh, Brian Day says that Sony is uh, doing darn good for somebody who's supposed to be here in high school. He's got toughness and he is coachable. I think toughness and coachable is as much as you can ask for right now. Um, we've Especially been asking 17, everyone, maybe 18 year old. Oh, I would be surprised if he was 18. <laughs> Um, yeah, for, for someone, everyone here, I think is going to focus a lot on the darn good and the toughness and the coachable and, 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 and okay. Sonny is definitely 17. CJ could be 18. Yeah, I, I would agree. That's probably the case. Um, the, but for someone who's supposed to still be in high school. Yeah. He's being graded and appropriately so. Appropriately so. He's being graded on a curve here. Um I will continue to ask everyone to pump the brakes on any Sunny Styles hype. He should be in high school right now. He's learning under the best right now and that's great. Uh that's that's great for Ohio State. Uh, that's great for Sunny Styles. Please continue to pump the brakes on on CJ. Okay. Not C. I almost said CJ Hicks. Sunny Styles. You 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 can put you can take your foot a little bit off the brake for CJ Hicks, but for Sunny Styles, slow down. Maybe he contributes a little bit in rotation later in the year, perhaps. 
And if he does, and if he gets on special teams, if we get some Sonny Styles on special teams, well, that's how you know the coaches like him. But yep. like, don't don't let your expectations go too far beyond that. Mm-hmm. Next year, of, next year we'll talk yeah. about Sonny Styles. Speaking of players that coaches like, uh, talk some more about Steel Chambers and Tommy Eichenberg. Uh, saying Ryan Day saying that they, uh, seeing both of them grow in the last year because because they've now played and they've started. They are different people now. Nothing new. They have stepped up. And that that's and that's one of the positions we've talked about. It's just has not been we haven't had a good linebacking group as a whole in quite a while. Like when when's the last time that we had a as a whole a really good linebacking uh crew? Dare, oh. dare, dare I say 14, 15? No, it's we've we've had good linebacking crews since then. Um as a whole, as a whole. As a whole. Okay. As a whole. Um, all right, Kyle, you said I was not going too far out on the limb or cliff. We'll, we'll play with the analogies. Saying that Steel, Steel Chambers is going to be the best linebacker on the team this year. Mm-hmm. How far out on the limb am I going if I say Tommy Eichenberg will be the second best linebacker on the team this year? Because and by the way, like literally Ryan Day just said it. So it feels like I'm not going too far out on the limb. But my God, is there a section of the fan base who hates Tommy Eichenberg with like every fiber of their being? They have not very nice nicknames for him. There's a there's a lot of things said about Tommy Eichenberg and uh, just- not a lot of it's positive. Yes, yeah, just, gangland not just, that. Not just, not so just how far running, out on the limb am I going? But, but Coach Noel is also giving credit to Eichenberg as well. So it's not just one coach, it's multiple coaches. Too. I, I totally agree. But you know when I said that, there's a lot of fans watching, listening to this, who are cringing at the idea of Tommy Eichenberg actually being good. You You know that. And, and you, a, lot you it, know, a lot of it had to do with that scheme because everybody's going to look at Eichenberg and, and look at look at him trying to cover wide receivers in the national championship game. That that was Borland. <laughs> that was Borland. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which uh, says says something about the maybe some unflattering reputations that uh eichenberg was unfairly uh had yeah. transferred to him from borland um yeah good linebackers not good coordinators for their skills with one exception is what gangland says um so kyle it seems it's like true. a real obvious thing to say with uh eichenberg getting so much love from the coaches but again, you know, the fans are going to hate me for saying it. How far mm-hmm. on the limb am I going? But if I say Tom Eichenberg's going to be the second best linebacker on the team this year. Well, let's look at let's look at the other linebackers here. We know who the what? other linebackers are, Kyle. Answer the damn question. Going out of going out of. Your way or going out on a limb. I don't I don't think it's unreasonable i i really don't think it is am i halfway on the limb give me a percentage giving giving the fact of who is going to play like it's it's not going to be that many players that's going to see the field that often um from the linebacking crew it's going to be it's going to be like four players that you're going to see i don't know if that's true Okay. So you have Cody Simon, who's going to get yep. some playing time. CJ Hicks okay. will get playing time this year. Uh, okay. Pallier Neoteote will probably get reps at points this year. Yep. Um, who am I? I'm forgetting. Oh, um, I, his name is escaping me. Mitchell? Yes. Mitchell will absolutely see snaps this year. Um, 
train them is getting a lot of hype. Uh, does that translate into snaps this year or snaps next year? I don't know. Uh, I've heard Naote Ote was taking reps at DE. He is. Uh, he's taking reps at both uh, Sam and DE right now. Which is interesting because <laughs> that DE position is like the wide receiving crew group here. It is pretty, it's a pretty crowded crowd. Yeah, it is. So that, that that is really interesting to see that he is taking snaps there as well. All right. Um, other players here that Ryan Day talked about, uh, saying it's good to see Jair Brown and KJ Johnson have done well, made some plays with the opportunities due to injuries uh at the position. Uh also talked about Mike Hall. Um, has been focused on his development, and when you do that, the payoff will will be evident. He also mentioned that only a handful of starting jobs actually up for grabs right now, but they will rotate a lot of guys at some positions. I feel like that's pretty much what he said about the offensive side here. So well, it's literally the, offense- the same. It's literally the same quote. It, I just okay. included it in in both the <laughs> offensive and defensive shows. All right, so, so <laughs> it was th- the same. I th- I think Kyle, it's the same press conference. I just split the the bullet points up. I I think there's more positions open on the defensive side than the offensive side. Uh, I mean, yeah. Absolutely. And I think there'll be a lot more rotation on the defensive side than there is the offensive side. You don't mm-hmm. agree? How how do you not agree with that, Gangland? You have like two positions on the offense. Noel said he while... wants to roll with the same linebackers and DBs. Okay, but like we have at we have like four defensive ends and five defensive tackles who are all starters. Um, even if we roll with two linebackers, um, I I feel like the the second who gets the nod at linebackers, then I can bargain chambers. Can you, can you sit here today with just, without a doubt that those are your two linebackers. I'm willing to say that those are the two starting linebackers against Notre Dame. 95%. Hmm. Seems pretty high there, Jared. It, read between the lines of what Day and Knowles are saying. Yeah, barring injury, of course, gangland. Hmm. Um, Read between the lines of, of what those two are. They're the two. Noel says Steele and Eichenberg are the two leaders in the linebacker room. Tommy's a quiet leader in the room, mm-hmm. but he and Chambers are the most confident guys. Okay. Those are the two right. guys. So, and then, so then the deep- I think the second the- corner is still up for grabs to go back okay. to Gangland's thing. The second corner is still up for grabs. There's not a definitive starter there. The defensive line is a mishmash of of starters. Like I said, yeah, there's I was, like I was gonna say that nine. Line, yeah, the, the there's like nine line, starters on the defensive line. Yeah. So can you can you sit here today and say, yep, these these four players are your starters? Or you it can't doesn't. There right aren't. Now. There aren't. Though. Who 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 gets the first snap? Who cares? They'll all. They're gonna split the the snaps somewhat evenly. Um, Starting for the D line doesn't mean much. Yeah, we agree on that. Um, mm-hmm. And then the safety, like your your cover safety, I think we all know that's going to be Hickman. Yep. Um, your cover guy is Tanner. I agree. Um, Tanner McAllister is probably your cover guy. Um, yeah. But and, and, I don't necessarily know what who about, the. What about? Who the ups? Ah, no, we we know who the up safety is. You can't forget about Proctor too. Like, yeah, Proctor there. Ransom has done some good work, and can't forget about Martinez and um and Williams. Like, it's it's a lot. It's a lot of uh, what we mentioned earlier. A lot of depth in that safeties, and who's 
I don't think you're going to see as much. You're not really going to see rotation in the safeties that you do on the defensive line. But by the way, I, I disagree. I think Court Williams is the guy. Court Williams for bigger packages, Gangland says. Potentially, but I, I think I think it's Court Williams and not Proctor. That's it, interesting because it's we, we sat here last year when Proctor went down saying how about how how big of an impact that I know. had for for the uh secondary. I still don't understand why Proctor isn't isn't the the deep safety. Didn't Knowles talk a ton about Proctor the other day? Uh, yeah, no, I don't know about a ton. Um, but he he talked about him. That, but this is my point: is that we have a fair amount of discourse of who the safeties are. Because quite frankly, I, I think it's entirely possible that you see Proctor. Yeah. I, I found the at here. either. Yeah. I think Proctor could play any three of the safeties. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think he's one of the only safeties. So from, I feel comfortable saying that about. Yeah. Here's the quote from Jim Norris saying Josh Proctor could be quote the best in the country at safety. But which safety? <laughs> that's 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 probably the question. That's and by the way, he also says about Court Williams. I mean, I've seen them over the years. Um, uh, uh, specifically, the question has ev has he ever had someone like Court who could be safety and linebacker? Quote: I mean, I've seen some over the years, but not courts level i think he can be great and they're both supposed to be starting at the same position mm -hmm. allegedly hey, isn't that isn't this a good problem to have at Ohio it is State? it is <laughs> all right uh let's see here uh last thing here he had talk about uh chip training him uh said he's a really good athlete most really good linebackers in college played running back in high school. Moving Steel Chambers last year was about need. Getting uh, getting Chip to Ohio State was more about a want. Yeah, uh, I, I like Trainum. I like Trainum more next year than this year. Um, but I think he could potentially be very good for Ohio State. I think that's probably more of a next year thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. It, let's let's hear from Knowles here and what he had to say. So I mentioned a few few of these here real quick. Uh, talked about talked a lot about the linebackers here and Knowles uh, says here Steele and, and Eichenberg are the two leaders. I, I already read this one, Kyle. All right. Uh, he said he said he uh, question about Knowles if he feels good about the defense. I don't want to feel good right now there, there was a quote i think it was early last week jared where he was he was a little upset to hear about ryan day saying oh oh this should be, it's like, in the notes it's be... in the notes we'll get there we'll get there it's in the notes well, don't, it don't give it away don't give it away okay all right all right <laughs> which one do you want to go then jared <laughs> the next one on the list uh no it says that we are going to find ways to unleash this defense there you go did did we ever talk about unleashing the defense last year? Was that ever a topic of conversation? No. Or was it? I hope we can hold up. That's that's what it is. Yeah, we were, we were hoping we were hoping more of a. This is we kind of accepted that this defense last year was a bend but don't break <laughs> type of defense, and at its best, at its best, <laughs> more like patching more, holes in a ship. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Noah's also said Ransom is playing all three uh, spots right now. He's great at pulling his trigger per nose. Here's a, here's another great safety who we we didn't even bring up in the previous conversation. 
Now, he's a little hampered right now because he's still coming back from an injury. I just, yeah. I don't know. The safeties are so confusing to me right now. And if, if Knowles is honestly saying he doesn't want to rotate his safeties, I don't know what to do with that. I don't know what to do with that. Mm -hmm. uh, Martinez and Dunn have, have wrecked a bit in corner because they are down in numbers. Uh, also seeing Hancock and Turner working off by themselves. Knowles didn't want to speak of Hancock's injury, but Hancock has been dressed for what it's worth. If he's dressing, it can't be that bad. Mm -hmm. uh, Knowles also said Ransom and Williams could be, could both be packages based on what he has seen at this point. Uh, Noah's also says that Tommy rarely makes mistakes. That should make you feel good about him in the linebacking position. So we can have Ransom and Court Williams on the field at the same time. But also we want to have Proctor on the field and also, Ronnie Hickman was basically the only guy who actually worked in the defense last year in a consistent basis. And also, uh, McAllister is the only guy who actually knows the defense, and they specifically transferred him in to play in this defense this year. And also, <laughs> who the hell's playing at safety? I just, a lot of people, a lot of people, Jared. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Uh, Knowles uh, on the prospects of playing court instead of adding a third linebacker. Uh, Knowles goes on to say, well, I feel like if you have a safety in there, then you still look like you're in a base defense. So the offense doesn't know what to expect as much. But when you substitute, now your package becomes limited. You know what I mean. So I think if you if you keep your base people or some version of it, you have a better opportunity to be multiple. Oh, and, and can we just can we just all of that is true. And if you need to if you like if you're listening to this and you didn't fully comprehend what Kyle just said, or rather what Knowles just said that Kyle just read, rewind it and listen to it again. Cause there's some good shit in there is a small snippet. There's some good shit in there, but can we just focus for a second on the better opportunity to be multiple in a defense that was stale and predictable and boring and predictable and predictable to have a defense that yes. Thank you, Kyle. To have a defense that is doing everything it can be to be multiple just sounds like just like a cold breeze on a summer day. I don't know yes. what else to say about it. Yes, give me that. Give me that all day, Jared. Knowles, uh, Knowles loves the same look and sending different things. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the ideal, right? To show nothing, but have the opportunity to do everything. That's the ideal. It's often more easy said than done, however. But yep. if you have talent, if you have the talent to do it. And, and, to, the go scheme. Along with, and to go along with court here, uh, he was asked, knows was asked, has, has he ever had somebody like court who can be a safety and a linebacker? I already read this Knowles one too. Was... Sorry. Listen, All right, Jared. sometimes I expect that you listen to me. And maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> I'm just going down the notes here, Jared. I'm going down the notes here. And sometimes I realize like, oh, yep, Jared read that. Jared read that. And yet you keep uh, going? Yeah, and I keep going. <laughs> yep. I just, I just want to keep, I just want to keep it going. Okay. Uh, speaking, keep it going. Um, <laughs> right early, earlier in the week, or maybe it was, maybe it was longer than a week. Ryan Day said that he he expects or 
believes that this can be a top 10 defense and knows <laughs> knows was a little upset about it and said, I wish, I wish Ryan day said it would have been a top five. Knowles coach. All right. Uh, r- rule one, the doctor lies. Coach Knowles. We don't know you. We don't know you all that well yet. We're, we're learning. We're trying to learn your defense and we're trying to, we're trying to learn about your, you know, your interview style, your press conference style. We're trying to figure you out. I want you to have a top five defense, but don't, don't tease me like that, man. Like that's not a realistic expectation. Hi, Austin. I want a top one defense. I I mean, of course you do. Of course you do. Everyone does. Top two and not two. Exactly. But like in less than 12 months, the man just got paid $2 million to become the defensive coordinator at Ohio state. Mm -hmm. If he does, if he, if he turns Ohio state into the trash heap, it was last year and turns them into a top five defense this year. Then he's underpaid. Give that man a raise. Yeah, Austin. Yeah, exactly. Austin says he just wants a top 25 for this year. You know, with the with the offense, the way it is, a top 25 will win a natty at 100 percent. I think Kyle and I were talking about it on the Monday episode. I think I said top 30. Um, I'll take a top 30 at the, at this point from what I've seen the past couple of years. <laughs> top 30 wins the natty. The offensive line being above average. And when I say above average, I mean by Ohio State standards above average. Because I think that those are the that's the only real question mark on the offensive side of the ball. So if the offensive line is above average and the defense is a top 25 defense, this team wins the national championship, period. No, no could in there. No could in there. This team wins the national title. The running backs, the quarterback, the wide receivers are that good. All the defense needs to do is be like top 25. This team wins the national title. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Last quote here I have is from Steve Chambers himself. Uh, As how challenging, um, how challenging is that to try to know the defense as well as the guy who created it? Um, (laughs) And Steve Chambers uh, just simply just says, it's a bitch. His understanding of it is so much higher than the rest of us. So it's just like playing keep up the whole time. It's really hard to try to keep up with his standard, but we have to. Now you can take that. You take you can take that a couple of ways, Jared. You can take that as well. One, it's that's good that making the defense uh, more complicated. But secondly, will it be too complicated for the players? Yeah, absolutely. It, it could be read either way. Um, one of the things that I know Ryan Day has praised Knowles about many times, said it a bunch of times during the spring, is how much of a teacher he is. Mm-hmm. And how he's attempted to bring the defense along slowly and teach it. And so we hope that that's continuing through the fall camp. That's all. That's 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 what we hope is happening. Um, the defense does need to be ready. And I think at a certain point, you do have to trust Knowles to find the correct balance between. The defense being multiple, but the players mm-hmm. also knowing what they're doing. Um, Knowles did say that he felt like, you know, Steel Chambers is being confident that Eichenberg are both being very confident. So maybe we take that as a as a positive. And also, you know, maybe they're attempting to do things in practice. 
that they're not necessarily going to be doing in games yet because you know once it's time for actual game prep maybe you pull the playbook back a bit while you're in fall camp maybe you're throwing a bunch of stuff at them seeing what's working seeing what they're comfortable with but when it comes like down to like notre dame time and you're actually installing the defense for the week maybe it gets pulled back a bit yep. um but that's why you pay that's why you bring in a that's why you bring in a experienced defensive coordinator and pay him two million dollars to figure that stuff out yep yep um well having a good run fit is important too we didn't last year i mean it's the whole it's the whole package right it's it's the whole package it's but it's still learning gap responsibilities and playing with aggressiveness two things that they didn't do last year i wonder if we see some inverted c3 um possible uh probably it depends upon the opponent uh, more than anything Thank else you. Slot corner would play the outside third. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, anything else about the defense you want to you want to cover or talk about, Jared, before we wrap things up? Um, uh, maybe if there's just something in the Ask Sloopcast questions, or maybe if anyone down in the chat wants to throw in a couple questions about the defense, I'd be happy to field but, those. There, there is kind of a question, but it's kind of related to the team as a whole and kind of goes into um, Kyle's corner here. Did we talk about Bonsu before the end of the last step? No, we did not. Um, that, Ohio State that, does. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like Kyle was saving that one for Kyle's corner. <laughs> That's fine. We'll, we'll just we'll just cats out of the bat. Cats out of the bag right now. So, uh, yeah, Kyle, Ohio do you have anything in Kyle's a, corner? Got a got a. Uh, Got a, a commit in Jaden. Uh, got a commit in Jaden Bonsu out of uh, Hillsdale, New Jersey. A top 300 commit here, uh, based on the 24/7 Sports composite. And yeah, definitely uh, guy that Ohio State really, really wanted and really likes. And uh, yeah, is definitely a a warm welcome to to have part of the team for the. Uh, 2023 um, recruiting class. Uh, Kabuto did ask, um, is the slow rate with black stripes? Because we talked about black stripes in the last episode. The slow rate of black stripes coming off actually a good thing for Ohio State. Last year, it felt like we were ripping them off like crazy, maybe out of, probably out of necessity. Um, two thoughts on that. One, is that with the black stripes last year that that was su that was and still is such an exceptional class that's an insane class of talent mm -hmm. um and that's not me saying anything bad about the current class it's just that a large percentage of those guys showed up immediately ready and several of those guys exceeding expectations immediately. Um, one of the reasons why I'm so high on Ohio State's national championship year uh, championship this year is because the last three Ohio State championships were won by excellent sophomore classes. The last three national titles by Ohio State were won by exceptional sophomore classes. And Ohio State has an exceptional sophomore class right now. So you're here. Yeah, even with yes, prior included, Austin, prior included. So when we look at the stripes this year. When we look at the stripes this year, what we are seeing is a class that there's not a 
I, again, I don't want to say anything bad about the current class. It's last year's class was exceptional. We're seeing right now a normal class. We're seeing right now a normal class, and we're also seeing a class that has less opportunity than last year's class. Last year's class had a lot of holes to fill. There was a lot more opportunity in that class, mm -hmm. a lot more talent to replace in that class. What you're seeing with the current class is not as much holes in the roster, not as much immediate need. So there's not as much opportunity for this 2022 recruiting class. The 2021 recruiting class, they walked into one of the youngest teams in the country. And probably I would venture to say like the youngest team in the power five, probably I would assume. I don't know. I don't actually know. I, statistically speaking, it was the it was the youngest Austin. Austin's telling me it was, in fact, the youngest, the youngest class in college football last year. So if you're a bunch of freshmen walking into the youngest, that tells you there's opportunity. That tells you there's opportunity. That youngest class is now a whole year older. Yep. And you have those amazing sophomores right ahead of these freshmen. There's just less opportunity. Well, yeah, exactly, Zach. Um, some people want a hand. Some some people want the starting job handed to them because they've been there long enough. And some people steal starting jobs. You know how we feel on the Sloopcast. We want guys who steal starting jobs. Don't don't wait for a job. Steal a job. Be so Ooh. good they can't not play you. Don't sit back and wait for your turn. Sometimes young talent is better. But also, do you really want to play a guy who was just sitting around waiting for the job? Is that the attitude? Sometimes people are like, oh, why do they play? Oh, why, why do we? I mean, if the coaches would get there. <laughs> Here's the thing. Pryor is so good that they're finding ways to get him on the field. They will find ways to get him on the field. Even if it's through special teams, they will find ways to get him on the field. Could have been because our scheme slash coaching was bad. Uh, I mean, first off, it was, but also he just didn't win the starting job. That has nothing to do with scheme. Yeah. He wasn't the best linebacker in the room. Sometimes get people, people get mad at like, Coaches, oh, why does so-and-so play and so-and-so doesn't play? Well, so-and-so is a great practice player. I don't care. I want the guy who's the best on Saturday. I don't care who's the best. Pra yeah, you should care who the best practice player is. Because if you start sticking dudes on the field who don't practice hard, guess what happens? The whole team stops practicing hard. You do reward pa practice players. Because that sets a mentality for the other six days in the week. And if you don't have that mentality for the other six days of the week, then you're going to suck on Saturday, no matter who you start. Agreed. Agreed. Did he, did he get on at Toledo? Um, yeah. Uh, Kyle, I, I went on a rant there. Were there any other questions? <laughs> no, no, that that was it, Jared. Oh, that's right. He is at Tennessee State. I got, I got a couple of clips out of that one. Maybe there's a maybe there's a, a piece in there for you, Kyle. <laughs> all right. Um, Check out. By the way, Kyle does all the edits for TikTok and Instagram and all that. So everyone throw some love Kyle's way for doing those edits. I just, you know, edit the rest of it. Jared gets to do the big parts. Kyle gets to do the highlights. Uh, all right, Kyle, that's it. Uh, you, we already did Kyle's corner, right? Did you have a bonus Kyle's corner? I don't. As it's releasing, we're down to 17 days 
until kickoff. All right, you're back to being Tom Moore. Um, all right, that's it. That's the end of the show. Uh, tonight's ending music will once again be camp. Uh, play them on Monday. We'll play them again today. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is camp. <laughs>